Hello YouTube, this is Jim Clark. Welcome to another wood turning video. I don't usually narrate my videos, they're usually silent. So this is an experiment. If you enjoy it, or if you don't enjoy it, make sure to let me know down in the comments and uh, I will make adjustments accordingly. Thank you for watching. I'm going to be turning this big chunk of acacia as a live edge bowl and starting out between centers. So here I'm just drilling a little bit of a flat spot for my drive spur. This bowl blank has been drying for about nine months and it's 16 inches in diameter and about six inches thick. And it's still probably well over 20 pounds. I didn't measure it, but uh, this was a heavy guy. I was trying to get as big a bowl as I possibly could out of this blanks and I uh, cut it a little close and there's a couple spots that are just a hair too big for the swing of my lathe. So I like to use this handheld power planer for little spots like this, especially since I already had the wings already set up and I didn't want to take it off the lathe to use a bandsaw or a chainsaw. So now that I got the whole blank set up, I'm going to start by carving away at the corners here to try and round it up at the same time as I get the bottom flat and bring it into a little better balance. So right here I'm trying to flatten out the bottom a little bit near the corner since I had to tilt the blank a little bit to get the upper wings of the live edge to match up. The block is really massive and hard so this is going to be a long process. So right here as you see I'm trying to still flatten out the bottom and you can see my gouge skipping a little bit and it's already dull and I've hardly done anything to this bowl. Sharp-eyed viewer will notice some cracking in the end grain of the blank. Those are going to come back to bite me a little while later. Worked out okay, but I wasn't too happy.
So right here, I'm getting pretty close to where I want to be in terms of the bottom of the bowl. I can still see that pith there where there's some juvenile wood. So I'm going to start forming the tenon and the foot. And by the time I get down to that level, I should have removed most of that. So I'm pretty close right here to getting the final shape of the bowl the way I want it to be. So I'm just going to refine the uh, shoulder real quick and try and get some nice clean cuts down there before I start to sand. So here I'm using my negative rake scraper from Carter and Sons to smooth out some of the tool marks. I absolutely love their tools. Not sponsored, not even close, uh, but they really make some wonderful, wonderful tools. So here's where a few things started to go sideways was finishing up the tenon and getting that to the size I wanted it to be and then I was going to do some sanding and quit for the day and finish it the next day and that was not a good choice. I have a really good dust collector, but I don't have a good setup for getting the dust that comes off of my lathe from sanding, so I need to work on that. That's a project that's going to be coming up here pretty quick. So here I'm using some shellac based sanding sealer to put a little bit of a finish on this while I let it sit overnight. There are no cracks in the end grain at this point and usually the sealer will keep the blank from cracking at this point, especially because it's been pretty dry. But that turned out not to be the case and I had to do a bunch of work the next day. So you may have just caught a glimpse there of some really fine cracks that I had to fill with CA and then sand down 
to bare wood to kind of make them disappear in the final product. Not real happy with that. I thought the blank was drier, but apparently because of how thick it was, it still was kind of wet. So here you can see a feature of my old Nova 3000 lathe that I absolutely love. It has a rotating headstock and because of the way I have my lathe set up, that's a game changer in terms of being able to hollow out bowls. My lathe is actually six feet long from when I was doing some other work years ago. So I can't get to the end of the bed to hollow effectively. So this really makes a huge difference in my work. So I'm finally getting this blank to be fairly balanced and I'm getting to turn the speed up now. I don't have a variable speed lathe. I have to change the belts, which is kind of annoying. So I'm hoping at some point in the future to upgrade that, but it works okay. Here I'm doing a couple things. I'm trying to get the upper wings of the bowl thinned out to where I want to be and smooth so I don't have to come back to them once they start uh, flexing as the bowl gets hollowed out. You can also see some of the hairline cracks actually came through and I'm having to fill those a little bit with CA so yeah.
So here you can see the aftermath of another error. The bowl blank was really too wet. I should have done it twice turning or just done it all in one day. But here you can see I had, had to quit the previous day and sealed it again. And now I gotta finish the inside and smooth it out and resand it. So this bowl took way longer than it should have and uh, learned quite a few things here. Here I'm using my Carter & Sons half inch bowl gouge to remove the tenon and really refine the bottom of the bowl so that it sits nice and flat. So here I'm using a technique I saw by Bill Anderson on Shady Acres Woodshop where I used a lathe to take the little nub off of there. Took some practice but I managed to make it work. So the sanding took forever mostly because the bowl had moved and the wings were not true with the bottom of the bowl so i had to do a lot of hand sanding but it turned out really well in the end and you can see here i'm using a salad bowl finish and it really really makes that dark acacia pop and the light sap wood is really just absolutely beautiful with the dark woods